اوكي هلا اول شيء او let's speak in english uh, we will start with this equation usually in most cases we actually have three cases we're going to deal with with an uh, pde or uh, separation of variable separation of variables We have three cases to deal with. Uh, the first case is uh, first order with first order, okay? With the first order. Okay, the second, the second with a first order. And the third one, which is the difficult one, the second with a second, okay? So as for the first, case or the first type of questions i'll write an equation here let's say we have partial u over partial x is equal to negative partial u over partial y let's add the three here see here's just a constant you can add any anything depending on the question it might be alpha it might be beta it might be anything okay it's just a constant okay to solve this First, you will look at the variable here. The variable here is the main function. The function that uh, you can say is it the function, okay? It's the function. So u is a function of y and x, okay? So x here, y. Okay, this is our function. We are performing the PDE uh, upon this function, okay? Now we will use something called the assumptions. We have an assumption to follow, which is using the same variables, but this time we'll use the capital letter just to indicate that this is the, you can say this is a prime or I'm not sure what to call it, but okay, let's just write it in the capital letter so you won't confuse it with the small letters. Okay. So U capital is equal to X capital Y capital. OK, in some books or maybe the doctor will write it for you in this way. It's the, th it's the same thing, OK? Just use this one. It's easier to write to save time during your exam, especially that this question is considered long. Not this question, the other questions are. OK, now to apply the assumption that we used, we need to apply this equation, these equations with these with this assumption. So partial <coughs> this one, partial u or partial x is x prime y. We differentiated the respect of x once for this equation. As for the other one, partial u over partial y is equal to x y prime. Now substitute it back with the original equation or the original question, you'll get x prime y equals to, to the constant, which is negative 3, x y prime. Now you need to divide by the assumption. Always after substituting, you need to divide by the assumption. OK. I'll send you the, the slides and you can check also my summary for the exact uh, method of solution. OK, so now we'll get X prime over X equals to negative 3 Y prime over Y. This is equal to lambda. Now, when you reach this part, you need to divide your paper into two. The first part will get the first variables X prime over X equals to lambda and negative 3 Y prime over over y equals to lambda. Now you use cross multiplication. You want the the primes on a different side, or you can say on one side. Okay, you need to do you need to make them as a one equation. So you will do cross multiplication, and you will get x prime is equal to lambda x. Then change it to y prime minus lambda 
sorry, this is x prime. Okay, x prime minus lambda x equals to zero. This is our first equation for this part. And as for this, you will get uh, lambda over three negative by y. This will be changed to y prime plus lambda over three y equal to zero. Okay, this is our first equation for this part of the, the question. Now we will apply the three cases. We have three cases to follow. Case one, which is lambda equal to zero. Uh, I think the doctor is using k or lambda. I'm not sure because he solved with the both ways when I was taking when I was taking this course. So case two is uh, lambda equals to positive beta square. And case three. Again, beta and uh, lambda are just constants. You can use any constant you like. You can use instead of lambda, you can use k, and instead of beta, you can use alpha. It doesn't matter. Okay, case three, lambda is equal to negative beta square. Okay, now I will start with case one. Lambda equal to zero, and you will get x prime equals to zero x prime equal to zero. If this is equal to zero, this will all be canceled. Okay, so we're still dividing the page. You need to integrate for both sides and you will get x is equal to c1, just a constant. As for the another equation, lambda is also equal to zero, so we'll still have y lambda, or sorry, y, uh, y prime equal to zero, integrate both sides. And you get y is equal to c2, another constant. Now you need just to substitute this in the first assumption, which is u is equal to x, y. So c1 multiplied with c2. And you'll get another constant. Any constant multiplied with a constant is just an, another constant. So use any letter you like. I would use a. So u is equal to a just a constant. Now, as for case two, case two, lambda is equal to positive beta square. Now, we need to get back to our equation to copy it. X prime minus beta square X equals to zero. This one is y y prime plus uh, beta square over three y equal to zero. Is it correct? Okay. Now to solve this, there are some fixed equations that you can use. They are given in your formula sheet. Okay. Formula sheet. Okay. Or you can just memorize them. Personally, I'm not good at memorizing, so I'm using differential equations. Okay. See here that here the uh, you can see that my method is slightly different from the doctor's. Okay. So I'm not sure if I should give this to you. If you want to use the formula sheet, it will just tell you that it X is equal to C1 E to the power beta square. Beta square X, OK? As for Y is equal to C2. Negative beta square over 3 Y. Now back to the assumption again. X, Y. X, Y, OK, you need to multiply this question, this function with this and you will get so constant multiplied with a constant is another constant. You have two same bases. This is an E here, sorry, two same bases E and E. So you basically just find the summation of the both exponents. So E to the power beta square X 
minus beta square over 3y. This is the solution of y uh, of u. Okay, this is the second solution. Now, as for case 3, okay, lambda is equal to negative beta square. Okay. Uh, we'll substitute this back and you will get x prime plus beta square x equal to zero and y prime minus beta square over three y equal to zero and you will get x is equal to c1 e to the negative beta square x and y is equal to c2 e to the negative beta square over 3y. Now again, use the assumption. u is equal to xy. Uh, also another constant. e to the power negative beta square x. It's positive here plus beta square over 3y. This is the third solution. As for this, using the boundary conditions that they provided you, I'm not sure what boundary conditions can be done for this question. Because the last time I took this question, we didn't have any boundary conditions to apply for this specific question for uh, first order with first order. So we can check with the, the initial conditions and the, the boundary conditions the doctor gave you to continue solving the problem. OK, now this is the second type of. Or the second, uh, you can say second level questions. OK, we'll have second with. First, OK, this is not equal. I'm saying it's with okay, you can see here. It's a second order with a first order. Uh, partial differential equations. OK, to solve this, we will use the same method. Basically. Did you understand the last question? Before proceeding. Hello. Oh, yes, it's clear. OK, Hassan, you're here, right? Are you here, Hassan? I will send you the slides after the after the tutorial, so you can review them. Okay. Now, as for the this function or this equation, you can see here that the boundary and initial conditions are given in a form of a diagram. Okay, so you you know how to extract them. I think that they're visible. You don't need to extract them. Anyway, uh, we'll start with the assumption. The assumption. The first or the upper variable. With the lower variables, you'll get X T. OK, this is our. Assumption, OK? Now we need to apply. The equation on this assumption. Or we can say substitute it to the to the equation or to the question, whatever. So we'll get X double prime T. Equals to one over alpha squared. This is just a constant, OK? Just a constant, OK? And uh, partial T, so you get X T prime. Now, after reaching to this, you'll just have to divide by the assumption. OK. So you'll get. X double prime over X equals to one over alpha square. T prime over T. OK. Now multiply or not need to multiply now. Equal to lambda. Now you need to divide your page into two. And you'll get X 
W prime X equals to lambda one over alpha square T prime equals to lambda. This is a multiplication here. OK, now we need to. Make it as this form. X double prime by multiplying with X, then subtracting this part the, to the other side. So you'll get X double prime minus lambda X equal to zero. As for this. You can multiply with alpha square T, then subtract this value back here and you will get T prime minus lambda alpha square T equal to zero. Now these are our equations. We will deal with these equations. OK, now we will use the boundary conditions. No, not the boundary conditions, sorry, the cases. Uh, apply the cases. So we have case one. Lambda is equal to zero. You will always have to find the three cases. Why is that? I don't know. You can simply by practice, you can know which case uh, has the correct answer. And after the tutorial, I can tell you where the answer will be. OK. So lambda is equal to zero. So basically X double prime is equal to zero. And T prime is equal to zero. Solve the both equations. Integration and you'll get X prime is equal to C. Then X is equal to after integrating the both sides again, you'll get C1 X plus C2. As for T after integrating it, you'll still you'll reach to the main form or this form, whatever it's called. C3, just a constant. Now you need to substitute to, uh, in the assumption, which is U, XT is equal to this multiplied with this. So C1, X plus C2, uh, C3, then Okay, you'll get this. So C3 multiplied with C1 is just another constant, so you'll just use A, X plus C2, plus, sorry, not C2, plus B. C3 with a C2 is also another constant. So this is our first solution. Okay, as for the second solution, case two, um, which one is case two? Okay, case two which is lambda is equal to positive beta square. And you will get X double prime minus beta square X equal to zero. You know why it's not minus, not regarding this, because checking back to the equation, you can see it's negative, so it's remain negative. OK, and this one will have T prime minus beta square alpha square t equal to zero. Now the solution of this again going back to your formula sheet. Or the other method that I don't want you to use, which is differential equations. OK, let me tell you what's the concept behind differential equations regarding this questions. If you somehow you didn't know how to use your formula sheet, you can use this method. OK, remember. If you don't know how to use your formula sheet, use this method. Looking at the degree of the differential, which is X double prime, which is two second order, you will change it to a certain letter, which is M, let's say M square minus beta square. This doesn't have a differential order. It's basically to the order zero, so it will come equal to zero. Again, this method is used when you don't know how to use your formula sheet. OK. Uh, you don't have to use this method in the exam, but if you couldn't, you can use it. OK, so this one is the same thing. M. Minus beta square alpha square, because these are constants. To solve this, M is equal to take this to the other side. Beta square square root for both sides 
and you'll get M is equal to plus or minus beta. Now, remembering from differential equations that this type of solution, if you got just a normal constant as the value of M, just a constant, plus or minus a constant, you can substitute it to this type of, uh, what was it called? Not general solution, it was called uh, X, uh, whatever it is, I'm sorry, I forgot. Okay, homogeneous solution, I think. Okay, so we'll get, we're using the variable X here. Yes, okay, X. C1 E to the power beta X plus C2 E to the power negative beta X. Okay, this is our solution. You'll find the same solution in your formula sheet, but you will not find this. You'll just skip. Okay, you'll just skip to the last step. Okay, if you don't know, you can use this method. As for this, m is equal to beta square alpha square. And again, we'll have the same type of solution, which is c, c3 e to the power beta square alpha square t. Okay, now apply the assumption which is u is equal to xt. You will multiply this with this, and you will get a e to the power beta x plus beta square alpha square t plus b to the power e, uh, plus b times e to the power negative beta x. plus beta square alpha square t. This is our second solution. OK, now as for case three, which is lambda is equal to negative beta square. OK, now you can see here that our solution will be in case three. You will find that now in the next few steps. So x double prime, this time it come, becomes plus beta square x equal to zero t prime plus beta square alpha square t equal to zero. Now I will use my method. You can use the formula sheet just to convert it. I'm saying that for the 10th time, just Please do not forget this. You don't have to use this unless if you are if you are obligated or you don't know how to use the formula sheet, use this method. But again, you need to remember differential equations. So now this will become m square plus beta square equal to zero. Then m plus beta square alpha square equal to zero. This will be m negative beta square alpha square. And this will give you the solution of uh, yes of t of t c1 e to the power negative beta square alpha square t. As for this, you'll get m plus or minus i beta. You can see i. As we learned in differential equations, when you have an i here, you'll just use. Uh, the sine and cosine solution. So we'll get x c1 sine beta x plus c2. Here we have a c1 first, c2, c3. It doesn't matter, it's just a constant. c3 cosine beta x. If you use the formula sheet, it will give you the same answer directly without going through this procedure. Okay? Same thing for this question or for this part. You won't need to go through this procedure. But why I'm t teaching you this method? Because there are some constants. You might not understand the formula sheet or you might get lost due to the formula sheet because it's very basic, very standard. It's not including what constant you are going to face. This one, this method is showing you how to derive the solution. You're not obligated to use that. I'm sorry for repeating this, but just please remember you're not obligated to use this method. OK. So uh, our U is equal to U is equal to this function multiplied with this. 
which is a e to the power negative beta square alpha square t sine beta x plus b cosine you forgot the e e negative beta square alpha square t cosine beta x okay <clears throat> now this is our third and last solution now to solve the three previous solutions we need to use the, what's called the boundary conditions boundary conditions or for you can use them as bs bcs or whatever these are our boundary conditions here now i'm going to tell you maybe the doctor will be generous with you and give you like 10 boundary conditions for some reason or some way but personally i suggest for you to use the boundary conditions that are equal to zero which are this and this. Anything with an infinity, but personally, I hate, I hate infinity. I don't like to deal with it. What's a must to use are this and this, okay? I, I recommend and I suggest for you to use these two conditions. This one is just for the last step, okay? This is for our last step and it's called uh, B of zero or B naught or whatever. We will use it in our Fourier series solution, which is the last step in the whole question. Okay. So we'll use first this boundary condition and then this boundary condition. Okay. Let's solve the boundary condition questions with the red pen for you to understand okay so we get u of zero t is equal to remember this boundary condition from from above then a we're going to work on case one first case one solution a of zero is equal oh, sorry plus b is equal to zero okay now since a is multiplied with zero, it's going to be canceled for now, and you'll get b is equal to zero, correct? Since b is equal to zero, our u, or our new u, is just ax, right? So here we're going to use our second boundary condition, which is u, l, t, a multiplied with l equal to zero. So L is not a zero. L is not a zero. OK, how is the solution becoming a zero? The only time or the only reason is that A is equal to zero. Since A and B are equal to zero, this solution is rejected. OK, the solution is rejected. <clears throat> OK, this is for case one. Case one rejected. Now going to case two. Case two, uh, which is case two, I don't remember it. Okay, this one is our case two. Okay, well, again, we're going to use the same boundary conditions. So, zero T, and you'll get A E to the power beta square alpha square t plus plus b e to the power beta square alpha square t this is equal to zero this means that a is equal to negative b if you solve this and you will get just a plus b equal to zero this will give you the indication that a is equal to negative b okay now using the second solution and you will get that a e to the power beta l plus beta square alpha square t plus or instead of plus b we'll just write negative a <clears throat> Beta L negative plus 
rate square alpha square t is equal to zero. Now you can see that A can be canceled, but try solving this question. You will not find it solvable. Try solving it without using any method that you like. You will see that this method, this question is unsolvable. The only way to solve this question is just by substituting uh, A with zero, which is also give you the solution that A and B are equal to zero. Again, this solution is rejected. Rejected. Try solving it with any way you like. Try do any any method that you understand in math. You will see that this solution is rejected. OK, now jumping to case three. Lambda is equal to or no need for Lambda. We already know what's it's the answer. <coughs> OK. Again, using the same boundary conditions, you'll get y of, uh, sorry, u of zero of t is equal to ae beta square alpha square t sine zero plus b e negative beta square alpha square t cosine zero is equal to zero. Now simplify this. Sine zero is basically zero, so this whole solution is multiplied with zero, not canceled. Remember, this solution is not canceled. This is zero, multiplied with zero. So this will leave you with <coughs> BE beta square alpha square T and cosine zero is basically one is equal to zero. This means that B is equal to zero. Because this solution is not equal to zero. OK, it's not equal to the zero, meaning that B is equal to zero for this solution to be cancelled for this part of the solution to be cancelled. This one is not cancelled. A is not cancelled. Again, A is not cancelled. Now our new function is. Our new function is X of T. A E the power negative beta square alpha square t sine beta x. This is our new function. Now we'll apply the second boundary condition, which is y of l for x equal to l and t, and you'll get that a e to the power negative beta square alpha square t sine <coughs> beta l equals to zero. You can cancel this by dividing for both sides and you'll still have sine beta l equal to zero. I know the solution seems long, but you can see that all questions have the same methodology. It's all the same thing. You will, you will end up with the same. There, there are no tricks. You can say that there are no tricks in this chapter. Just a simple question, apply it, that's it. OK, just you can say just practice enough and you will understand that this chapter is very easy. OK, the sign beta L equal to zero and instead of using your calculator, especially that it's not allowed in our course, beta L. For sine to be equal to zero for sine theta to be equal to zero, theta must be equal to n pi. In our case, theta is equal to beta L, so beta L is equal to n pi. We need the value of beta, which is n pi over L. OK. This is this is the solution of B of beta. Now, finally, for our final step, which is Fourier series. We're going to find the Fourier series, so BN is equal to this is the Fourier series equation 0 to L. B of 0. B naught, whatever sine n pi over l x dx. OK, so as for the value of l, we don't need it, and you'll find that at the end of the question that l is not needed. Now, finally, we'll use this initial condition. This is not a boundary condition. This is called the initial condition, an IC. OK, 
and the value of IC is the value of B of zero or B naught. Okay, in our case, B naught is equal to zero, oh, sorry, equal to 10. So <clears throat> we get two over L, zero to L, 10 sine n by over L x dx. Take the 10 outside because it's, it's just a constant. You'll get 20 over L, zero to L sine n by over L x dx. <coughs> this will give you 20 over L. The integration of sine is negative, and uh, what's inside the, the, the bracket, you need the derivation of what's inside of the bracket, the reciprocal of that derivation. So <coughs> I just need the constants here, okay? That's the reciprocal of the derivative of the angle inside the sine. Just apply normal integration if you don't understand what I said. So we'll get L over n pi cosine n pi over L x. And the interval is 0 to L. Now, to clear this equation, make it easier, take out this. Uh, constant outside and you'll get negative 20 over n pi and inside will get cosine n pi over l x 0 to l negative 20 over n pi and you'll get this solution which is if you substituted l here you'll get if you substitute l with an x L will be cancelled, so you'll we'll get cosine n pi. Okay, cosine n pi minus zero, cosine zero. This can be simplified to negative 20 over n pi, negative one to the power n, negative one. Now you need to find the, uh, the odd and even values. The, the uh, what's called the even and odd test. So if n is even, if n is even, is a horrible handwriting. So if n is even, you will get zero. And n is odd, you will get uh, yes, 40 over n pi. Okay, finally, the solution of this whole problem. So u of x and t is approximated since this is just approximation, <laughs> summation of odd numbers till infinity. This shows you that we're only using odd numbers. 40 over n pi sine n pi over L x. OK, this is the solution of the whole problem. OK, do you understand this? Do you guys understand this? Hello. Did I raise my hand? Guys. Hassan, please answer. Don't give me a thumbs up. No, they're typing in the chat. OK, I don't like that. I will, I will ignore him. OK. So do you understand this question? Do you want me to do a review for this question? Because still we have actually a worse question. If you don't understand this, you're in big trouble because you have a worse question. Way, uh, way worse, OK? You have a second order with a second order, which also I encountered in my exam. Well, maybe we can have a quick review. OK, see. First, 
we have the equation. You can see that it's a second order. OK, second order with the first order. OK. This is just a constant one over alpha square. Do you see my mouse? Do you see the cursor? Can you see the mouse? Oh, yeah. OK, good. This is just a constant. This is the differential. The differentials that we are going to use. These are the partial differential equations. Now we're going to use an assumption. What is an assumption? Assumption is just a method to help you solve the question using separation of variables. OK, how to find the assumption? The assumption is just a function. Applicable for this uh, PDE. So the function is u since here here we can see that the main function is u. OK. If you don't understand it, just memorize it. The denominator is the main function. The, the, the variable in the denominator is the main function. As for the denominators, both denominators are the functions or the, the inner functions inside the main function. So u is a function of t and x. Understand it this way. u is a function of t and x. OK? This will give you this assumption. OK, now we need to apply this assumption to the same equation. So partial square u over partial x square is equal to using this assumption again is x double prime t. OK, and partial u over partial t is for the same function again or for the same assumption as x t prime. Now we substituted these values. Here inside the main equation. One over alpha square is unchangeable. It's just a constant. OK, <clears throat> so we substituted the values back here in the main equation or the, the equation given in the question. OK, which gave us this. OK. Now we need to divide by. The assumption. This is a step. You will use these steps always. These steps are unchangeable. For the whole procedure, actually. You don't have any new steps. You don't need to go creative. OK. This will give you this after dividing on the assumption, you will give you'll get this. Three sided equation. <clears throat> X double prime over X equals to one over alpha squared uh, T prime over T equals to lambda. You will solve each equation individually. The x, the x's on a part, and the t, the letter t or whatever variable this is, on the other part. <laughs> okay, this will give you two different equations. You will use, you you'll just change them to this form of equations. Okay. Then you'll start using the cases. The first case, which is always the easiest, which is lambda equal to zero. OK, lambda equal to zero will give you this solution. Just by simple integration, you will reach out to the solutions. As for case two and three, here things are getting a bit messier. You'll just use positive beta square and negative beta square. As for solution, solution will be here. Again, just substituting. Then using your formula sheet, you will jump to this answer. The same for this one. If you don't know how to use your formula sheet, use my method. OK. The, anything that has an M in it, you know that this is Bisher's method. OK. This is my method. Do not use it unless if you are in desperate need. OK. This is a part of my method. Actually, my, my full method is different from this. OK, now after finding the solution for both variables X and T, we'll just multiply them. OK, multiplying them, you just sum the exponents since we are having the same base for both for both equations. You'll just find the summation of the exponents. Exponents, the number which is on top here. This is called an exponent. OK. OK, whatever. OK. The same thing we're going to do this here. Again, anything that has an M in it, this is my method. You do not have to use it unless if you're desperate. If you're crying inside, if you're crying during the exam, use my method. If you're not crying, use doctor's method. Okay. 
After finding the solution X and T, you just multiply these solutions together to get this final weird looking, extremely difficult looking question. Now, finally, we'll just use the B, C's, or what's called the boundary conditions. The boundary conditions, you need to review this, work it on yourself, try to just solve as much questions as much as, much as you can, and you will reach to this understanding. <clears throat> Again, this chapter is not difficult, it's just very long and takes lots of time. To be honest, this is the easiest chapter in the whole course because there are no anything new in this. OK, I know it's four pages long, but uh, there's nothing new to. To do in each in each equation, you just have three types of equations. Just go and create your own equations to solve this. OK, here we're using the boundary conditions and you will get that everything is equal to zero or solution is rejected. Remember that one of the cases is the correct one. And this case, I will say it now after finishing this question. I will tell you which case has the solution and which variable has the solution. OK, we're just applying the whole cases stuff. Eventually, we'll get, we'll, you will end up, you must end up, you must end up with sine beta L equal to zero, which will give you beta is equal to n pi over L. Finally, apply Fourier series. There's nothing new to learn from Fourier series because you already know that from chapter seven. OK, now reaching to the beginning of our solution when we extracted the both equations, then going back to our boundary conditions. If you don't understand this, it's fine, but try to because uh, you can say it's a cheating case. OK, you can you can just play with the with the equations or you can understand or Anticipate where your answer are, where your answers going to be, in which variable and which uh, side. Okay. So looking at the boundary conditions, we need to clean the things up first. Okay. Using the boundary conditions, looking at this. Okay. The secret is here in both equations. That u of x and t. You can see the boundary condition is only. With this variable, OK, the same thing here. If you where where the L is, the L. L, which is the length of the of. Or the width of the wall or whatever condition or whatever equation you're using, maybe L or B or whatever variable given or a number, maybe three or four, you can understand that this is where the solution is going to be. OK, this is the trick. And whenever you get this, remember X is a variable, T this time it's equal to zero. This is B of zero of Fourier series. OK. You will use this in Fourier series. And this indicates that the solution is a solution of X. That's why I simplified it and write X of zero. This is actually related to my method of solving. <clears throat> OK, this is the solution of this question. Uh, did you understand this question so far? Oh, yes, I think it's clear. OK, you need to solve this by your own uh, after the tutorial. Uh, I will also solve another question, which is a second order with second order. Do you like me to solve it now or keep it for another tutorial, maybe tomorrow or after tomorrow? What do you like me uh, to do? Is it a long question? Yes, actually longer than this. Uh, then maybe we can do it uh, another tutorial tomorrow. Do you guys accept? Uh, yes, if it's okay. Okay, I have two yeses. What about uh, Hassan and Hana? I'm not sure if the another Mariam said anything because I'm confused. 
Yes, no problem. Hassan, select more Tani. Okay. Hassan is giving me a, th a th thumbs up. Okay. As for anyone who wants to leave the meeting, you're free to leave. As for the people who don't understand what I just said in this in this question, you can stay. I will. You can say I will give a pause for this meeting and I will start a new one to solve using my method. My method is slightly different. So if anyone is going to stay, please let me know. Otherwise, you can can just leave. 